Hi, Freedom Warriors. Bill Fairman with Carolina Capital Management. Wendy, Wendy Sweet. Wendy Sweet, sister and partner. Jonathan Davis, also a partner, but he does all the work. We just hang out. That's right. He's, <laughs> he's the new guy. We really wanted to introduce him to you. So, so why don't you do that, Bill? Uh, warriors meet <laughs> Jonathan Davis. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. So, so uh, talk a little bit about what Jonathan brings to the table. Okay. For us. So everything. <laughs> uh, Jonathan's experience with uh, commercial uh, properties, valuation, mm -hmm. secondary marketing. What that means for us is that uh, when we get uh, all our money used up in our fund, which is normally always, we have to sell <laughs> yeah. off chunks of loans <clears throat> so we can recapitalize and make new loans. Right. And Jonathan handles those sales as well as Very well. Uh, personnel things yes. as well. He uh, has put together a really good team and uh, they are extremely efficient and everybody has bought in yeah so that's mm -hmm. even yeah, yeah that, that's the biggest he thing. snowed everybody that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jonathan came from a family office uh, where uh, they did a lot of note purchases initially and then he set up their loan origination side mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. and we were very fortunate to yes meet him steal him away and then <laughs> stole him out from under him. with a smile uh, so, so, so that said we would we want to talk about what's going on in the market. It is fast and furious. It changes every day. Mm, it's cray cray out there. <laughs> um, so if you think about it, this past week or two, the stock market has lost all of its gains mm -hmm. yeah. in the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. Now you take funds like ours uh, and I haven't put the numbers together, but, uh, we we haven't lost anything. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing good. And, and and most other funds in our same space are are going to have the same right uh, thing right now. We don't go up and down, and it's not crazy. That's right. Mm -hmm. However, you're gonna there's going to be concerns if you're holding uh, commercial uh, properties or commercial loans that have a large exposure to retail. Mm -hmm. So retail shopping centers. Um, office buildings, mm -hmm. uh, those types of Strip things. Strip centers. Yeah, th those things are, are going to be hit the hardest right now because, yeah. you know, everything's shutting down. And the high-end market, too. The high-end single families, I think, are well, uh, yeah. likely I was, to I was going to get to that part oh, sorry. on, on the residential, quiet. but r right now in, <laughs> yeah, hush. <laughs> hush your mouth. Um, yeah, on the commercial side of things, it doesn't mean – Self storage, I don't think is going to be an issue oh, no, right now. No. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're also considering commercial multifamily. Mm -hmm. That's and, good. And uh, now the, the uh, hotel motel space yeah. is going to be hurt. Yeah, if you're investing in hotels, you might yeah. want to pull back on any, that. Any hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just for a while. Yeah, yeah, and and it's really it's a short term thing. Mm -hmm. We we can already see it turning around in China. Uh, Singapore yes. did an awesome job, mm -hmm. and then South Korea has has done a good job. Now the difference in those societies is that they're hovering over you, so they have some privacy issues with a little how communism they, going they, on over there. No. Just low. Um, <laughs> the, the, the reason that they got a handle on it quickly is because they know where you've been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're able to contact all these people that you were in contact with, yeah, and then yeah. isolate those people. Yeah. While that's very efficient. It's hard for, you know, countries like uh, Australia and America and Canada and uh, Mexico, I would say, uh, to do that kind of surveillance on you. Yeah, well, and even in, in Africa, you know, we've been doing a lot of mission work over in Africa, Tanzania, and they've sent all the kids home uh, from the schools back to the orphanages, and there's nobody on the streets, and it's a completely different situation there. So it's, and, and you know, Scott, who does our recording for us, is, down in South America, he's seeing the same thing there. So it's just, you know, absolutely worldwide what's going on. But And again, this isn't a, a market-induced downturn. Right. This is... Uh, a black swan event. Yeah, it's what we call a black yeah. swan event. What we've been talking uh, about. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially... What we've been preparing for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, essentially, yeah. everything is shut down for a couple of weeks to maybe a couple of months. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, there's going to be some short-term pain. Right. Uh, 
over a year ago, we saw that the real estate residential market was had a lot more downside than it had upside right. potential. Right. Because it, we thought that it was already at the peak. Now, in the areas that we are in and we're lending, those markets are still growing and they have upside, but mm -hmm. there's no better time than the present <laughs> to get uh, conservative. And yeah. we changed our model to only go uh, or do loans uh, for what we call affordable housing. Our bread and right. butter market. Right. And yeah. the reason for that is because that is the piece of real estate that is the most coveted. Mm -hmm. And why is it the most coveted? Because it's the most liquid. Right. Why is it the most liquid? Because it's the most coveted. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, a vicious circle. <laughs> you, you have first-time home buyers that can afford the affordable housing. Right. You have people that are downsizing. They're going to go to the affordable housing. And then you have investors. Um, they're going to buy the smaller homes because uh, they can still buy those and rent them out and get a decent return on them. Correct? Right. Correct. Does, does anybody like to talk other than me? Well, you won't <laughs> take a breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pause right now. And ask for input. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, one of the things that I think uh, we even had a little meeting today. We've been having meetings every day about what's going on because it's yeah. changing so much. And, um, you know, we just got a letter from one of our large institutional lenders, someone that we sell a lot of loans to after we close them, that basically, and, and this is for the, the buy and hold, the, the longer term loans, they basically shut it down. They, I mean, we've got 10 loans in our pipeline that, that we can't close that are long-term loans. So yeah. the short-term loans are still being- Can I speak to, absolutely. to that? So, yeah, I'll take a breath now. So <laughs> over the last few years and, and, and maybe even a little more than that, mm -hmm. we are constantly asked by these institutional backed aggregators to, well, you know, scale your business with mm -hmm. us, scale your business with us. Mm -hmm. Here's all the examples of everyone who has 10 X their business by conforming to what we're, what we do. Lend and like we do. Lend like we do. Mm -hmm. And, the, and, and, you know, and only to us, you know, make us your, your exit or your, your origination arm, yeah, whatever it may be. Go-to company. Mm -hmm. So we, with what we're seeing right now, um, we're we, really we, glad we, we said We no. look pretty smart, but the, 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 <laughs> The goal was from when we started all of this and when I came on mm -hmm. to, which was two years ago now, a little right? over two years ago, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, to make us self-sufficient, mm -hmm. to not go beyond our means, to not create a machine that we can't feed. Right. Because if we had scaled our business to conform and to capture that extra mm. um, market share, we'd be laying off people oh, right yes now we would. Yes, we because would. they have just shut down all originations mm -hmm. and we've been sending them over the last few years, things that, you know, meet their guidelines that are just kind of spill over from what we do. Right. We haven't got out of what is our bread and butter and what makes right. us good Thank and you, what Lord. makes us um, our niche in our market and our niche, however you want to say yeah. it. Uh, we'll be country and say yeah, niche. niche. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it comes out. I'm, I'm from Kentucky, so yeah. Uh, Carolina, we, we're the same. Yeah. So, so we're. When I look at this, I'm. I get the letter from from these institutional lenders, just like, hey, we're pressing pause on everything, and you know, not that you know, I would actually send this, but my first response was, well, all those people that you told me to give me an example of who 10x their business off of you, how are they doing right now? That's right. They're and, shaking I mean, in their we, shoes. We know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, goes back to, we stay in our markets doing what we know works with the team that we have to not go beyond our means. That's right. And Great. that's, that's right. what's so important to, I think, what we bring to our investors. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we're, we're not trying to be national lenders trying to take all this money and take over the world. We're trying to get solid returns for our investors and preserve capital and, and have principal preservation right. all along the way. That's right. And I think we're not sexy. Yeah. We're vanilla. We say but, that all the time. But what we're seeing right now <laughs> is, is proof that discipline works. Mm -hmm. Discipline works. It's not like, like when you said, it's not sexy, but it works. This is where the turtle is mm -hmm. getting ahead. 
right? Well, with the institutional investors coming into the space, they tried to entice lenders like us mm -hmm. by uh, showing us a path that would be uh, the co our cost of capital would be much lower. Right. Mm -hmm. And that means cutting out our investors, you guys, yeah. because we pay more for that capital because we're all participating together yeah. versus we're, we're essentially um, like a line of credit with a bank right. that has really low rates. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen this story before. We went through 2008 yeah. <laughs> and we know what Whee! happens with the larger <laughs> financial institutions yeah. mm -hmm. when they uh, fall hard. Uh, well, they don't necessarily fall. They just stop yeah. and pivot and go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, and, 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 to, and to build off of that, it's like based on like our core values and what we want to do, mm -hmm. is it more imperative for us to um, capture a higher return for ourselves in the, in the short term and line a billion dollar company with more money in their pocket? Mm -hmm. Or is it more important for us to say, how do we create wealth for those around us. You right. know, one of my favorite sayings is, you know, we rise by lifting others. That's right. Like, like, you know, we, you know, we rise because we're lifting investors with us and investors are lifting us That's <laughs> with right. them. That's so right. it, it kind of works all together. Right. We'd rather help create wealth for, for an investor, for someone who's, you know, worked hard than for this billion dollar corporation right. that is trying to get you to create a machine that you can't feed. That's right. Yeah. And since we've been in business, that has been the model. We are trying to benefit both the uh, investor that is investing in our fund mm -hmm. and we're trying to uh, benefit the small business owner that's borrowing the money from us. Yeah. And if both of those sides win, then we will win in the long run. Absolutely. Right. And the great thing about private capital is that we have the bandwidth to change and right. to pivot right. uh, as the market uh, <clears throat> changes and pivots as well. Yes. Uh, the big companies, if there's trouble making payments, and there will be some trouble making payments mm -hmm. by, by You're folks, right. You're right. whether yeah. we own that property and we're renting it out or it's in the form of a mortgage payment, there's going to be uh, some bumps in the road within the next uh, probably six months. Yes. So how do you deal with that? Well, the, the bigger institutions, they only know one way of doing it is uh, Stop. you're in default. That's and right. Now you're going to have to pay uh, fees and penalties mm -hmm. with what we do is we can always do loan modifications. Uh, we can work with them. Um, we can rent the houses out. It, is that return for a couple of quarters going to be uh, as high as it was in previous quarters? Probably not. Uh, but we're talking about a small dip and then a bigger upside. And why is it a bigger upside? Because we've worked with them and they will remember that. That's right. When it's time for them to do another one. So uh, keep that in mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. People need two things. And I say this every time, mm -hmm. two things in any economy, they need food and they need shelter. Right. And we provide the shelter portion of yeah. it. And we're doing it in the space that is really geared towards that affordability. That's right. And that's the one that's going to be the, if we end up having to take back some properties and we can't sell them for any reason, we can still rent them out for close to what our expected return is. Well, you know, and another question we keep getting asked to from, from other people, other lenders and, and just people in general that are inquiring about what's going on is, you know, what if you can't have gatherings of more than 10 people and that kind of thing? Well, in our office, we only have nine, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> but we can we can operate virtually. But the people who are borrowing money to rehab these houses, the crews that are coming out to work, you're looking at two or three people on a crew, Typically, and yeah. and there's usually just one crew in a house at a time. So that's not going to violate the you know ten person gathering, and and they're. Um, you know, they're, they're coming and going, they're going in and out. It's not, you know, a big group of people all stuck in one house. So, so rehabs are still continuing. Um, the supplies are all delivered. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's easily taken care of. Everything's delivered from the store or from the supply house or wherever it's coming from. And all of the logistics are still going on. Um, so, so they're still in a position to be able to continue to rehab the house um, and get it finished up yeah. um, and even start rehabs and get it on the market for sale. People yeah. can still look at houses for sale. They're still doing that. 
Um, they're still renting property. Virtual showings. I know a lot of realtors are doing that instead of that's right you know, having people trace trace through their home. Yeah. Now uh, this was supposed to be like a little ten minute. Uh, <laughs> and we just video. go us, on and get on us and going. On. You know what's you know what's interesting? <laughs> I just to, to butt in real quick. I don't know. I don't have the data. I don't know anything. I'm just posing this as a question I, on the i buyers. Is that you think that's increasing or decreasing right now? I buyers, tell me what it, you mean. It, so like open door or, you know, all those, like, uh, you know, you get a letter from them about every week to buy your house. Right, that's right. right. That's a great thing. Is, to is, ask. is, is that increasing? I, I, or I don't know yet because all the data is always uh, back uh-huh. yeah. Sure. yeah. So we, we, we don't know that. However, we do question. know that cash is king. Yeah. And if in uncertain times, people are willing to take the cash from the, the big companies that are that's, willing to give it. You know, it, that's, mm-hmm. it should help them. You're exactly yeah. right. So uh, anyway, it's we are time. still accepting it's money a, in our fund. It's not <laughs> disclaimer, time to disclaimer. Panic. It is a short-term <laughs> blip, and um, we we will all overcome this. Mm, absolutely. Our, our particular market is not uh, volatile. It is a needed service, just right. like the grocery chain. Right. Well, it's the, the most important place. thing is to remember to keep your humanity to 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 think of others in this time mm-hmm. sure. um, mm-hmm. and put others first, you know, we just, you know, just said before, you know, we rise, us, but yeah. <laughs> we rise by lifting others. I mean, we, we had a meeting, I think it was yesterday and, and the question was, was uh, posed. How can we help our community right, right now? What right. can we do? And we put together several ideas to do so, but like, what can we do to help people through this? Sh- Cause we all need help through this right. short period of time. And the more we help, the faster we're going to get yeah. through this. Well, first of all, we can all pray for each other. Yes, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. <laughs> the short 10 minute video that probably <laughs> went 15 or close to 20. Because Billy talks a lot. Uh, yeah. If you have any questions, <laughs> we're <Still> available. Uh, <laughs> CarolinaHardMoney.com. CarolinaHardMoney.com. It was great to talk to everyone. Thanks. Have a wonderful day. 